<clears throat> oh, I forgot the opening. Just a second. <clears throat> All right. Uh, hello and welcome to. <clears throat> sorry, our painting stream. Uh, today we are doing a whole bunch of stuff, but we're starting out with some gluing of models. Um, we are also going to be painting these later, and we're going to continue painting these towers we're started. Um, but first we're gluing dungeon tile corners. Um, these get all glued up together to eventually look something similar to this, although this will be stone instead of a town. And we're going to have them magnetized so they'll click together and hold together a little bit. So, we're also going to do some repairs on a couple pieces while we're doing those. So, what we're going to be doing first is loading these magnets into the bases that will be glued on. So each of these bases has eight holes, and we're taking these little magnet balls and dropping them carefully in each one. They will pull each other out, so you have to be a little careful doing that. Um, oh yeah, and if you're interested in any of the models that we print and paint here, um, you can find their designs under attributions on our website, DysonDungeons.com, and under attributions. That's where a lot of the designers can be found. Um, those out of the way. So, this isn't the most exciting beginning, but it's an important part to build up so they're all ready to go when the epoxy starts flowing. Um, we use all of these pieces in our D&D stream, which airs Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and additionally, if anyone is on yet, I don't know, um, we have our Halloween episode coming up this weekend, Halloween weekend. It's a two-parter. It's pre-recorded. It was a lot of fun to make, and um, there is a giveaway associated with it. Uh, to enter the giveaway, I believe all you have to do is um, be a follower here on Twitch and uh, DM us the word Hawthorne. Um, <clears throat> that's the name of Hawthorne Manor, which features in the uh, playthrough. Now, to enter, you do need to be about over 18 and have a U.S. mailing address um, in order for us to do the giveaway for you. So, if you're interested, feel free to enter. It's free to enter, and we're giving away a very pretty dice cup for shaking your dice in, as well as a couple minis that we painted here on the show that we use for the Halloween special. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. They're pretty fun. Actual set pieces from the actual production. Yes. That were actually made in this very stream. Yes, we did make them, so if you watched our streams earlier, y'all have seen the pieces that you would win. There's just the two left, so. Last time I did almost all of the magnets, and I think our batch was just shy of 100, which means I put in 800 or so little magnets in one sitting. An impressive pile of little round magnetic balls. 
my fingers were slightly sore. Um, today we're just doing these 14 corner pieces and a couple repairs, so they won't be a huge full episode event like last gluing. But we're printing away at more pieces for this huge set we're building, and hopefully we'll get to see that soon. So we have a metal table behind us, and um, just moving some pieces of parts over. And we've covered that with paper in case there's any loose epoxy that comes out the edges, which can happen. We have some isopropyl alcohol ready for cleaning our fingers, and um, yeah, we're gonna be re-gluing a couple pieces once the epoxy is mixed, mixed together. You mix epoxy as a two-part. It's one part of epoxy and one part hardener, hardener which smells awful. And um, we're using five-minute epoxy, so it cures within five minutes and hardens up. That gives us just about enough time to put all the pieces on, set them over there, get them straight, and proper. You want to do these first? Yeah, well, let me get those out of the way. Which piece is that? That's the floor. This floor? Mm-hmm. No. It's, it's one of the walls. One of the new ones. Okay. Yep. It just got placed. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Well, it okay. doesn't much matter. You could use... No, those have parts that adhered to them. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with one of the corners. So I'm going to assemble them here and then slide them over. behind us. All right, now this is a central floor tile that we're fixing. This is a wall. Where the floor adhered just fine, but the wall did not. So that goes on like that. That creates a little wall. And one more wall. So I usually mix enough epoxy to do about you know, seven or eight of these. Um, usually that works out because it, takes as much time to spread this to seven or eight of them as it does for it to begin getting pretty set up. Um, I'm usually done using it just about the time that it becomes so hard that it can't be used anymore. So the only thing I have to be careful of is this pattern on this floor. I need to make sure this whole square is on the inside um, of the room that this corner will make. And I need to do a little quality control over on the table just to make sure everything is facing the right direction and is sitting on top of the base evenly. There can be a little wiggle room. Um, 
Now everything prints 100% perfectly all way every time. So, but the the less extra bits sticking off. Finish that patch of epoxy. Just yes, it's starting to get hard enough not to be able to use anymore. So that worked out well. And we've got what seven left? Mm -hmm. Seven. Yes. No. Yep. So that should be just about right for the next patch. You can take a minute. Not a uh, problem. I'm just putting it out. Nothing happens until they mix. We like to try and do this with three people, but yeah. And I spilled water. Mm. Juggling a lot of pieces, sometimes they spill water. But it's just water. And it spilled onto a paper towel. Mostly, so that's good. So that'll be something to clean. And I'm just making two what appear to be equally sized puddles. One of the hardener, one of the epoxy. Itself. Hi, SD. Well, thanks for lurking. Today is starting with a glue day, and we are gluing up some corner dungeon pieces and spilling water all over at the same time. Doing two things at once. Mm-hmm. Pretty skilled. All right. Ready for the next bunch? Yep, now that that water is cleared out. I believe I'm good. Okay. Then we mix these two puddles together into one smear. So, making uh, corners like this piece here. And uh, except in a uh, sort of stone wall. A little hard to see without being primed and painted, but... I'm very focused right now. That's why I'm not acting too much. Yep, just trying to get these things put together. And then we'll go back to painting towers. Towers? I think that's what it is today, right? Been working on the towers? Yeah, I thought I heard tires when I was playing. No, we don't need to paint tires. We have some in the garage. If I could bring one in if you wanted to paint one. <laughs> I think we're okay. Okay, there's a tiny bit of epoxy left. Is there anything else we want to 
fixed to anything? I don't think so. Mm. I will need some isopropyl alcohol and I'm done. Oh yeah. All right, so got through the epoxy, which is nice. Clean off the little tops of the epoxy things so that they stay sealed. Since we're getting back to painting, I am going to uh, go grab some more water since I knocked mine over. Mm -hmm. cup of water required. This way. So I believe we're both using red brown today. For most of what's going on. Are we both doing the same color? I have a little bit left oh, to finish okay. on my lower tower because you got a head start on me. No. Nope. And I'm painting the upper this tower. The finish lower tower section that you finished yesterday. Mm -hmm. And by finished, I mean we still haven't washed it yet, but we're going to get all of it all painted. Four of them done, and then we'll do wash. And then we'll do the washes. So I'm doing the uh, dark the dark brown color also. Um, I've got two sides to do. And these uh, to do like that. upper sections, we put together a little superstructure. They slide in like that to create a tower that will glue in after we um have them all painted up so he's getting a little ahead of me he might be he'll probably beat me to finishing mine but he has a horse he can work on so. oh yeah it all evens mm -hmm. I'll let you use the bottle cap at first. Okay. And I will pull out the big brush and use what's. Yeah. This, this is getting near the bottom of the jar. I need to put some thinner in it, I think. Yeah. You can probably stir it from the bottom. Just to really get it, yeah, to get it mixed up. Otherwise we'll end up wasting some. That seems like a waste to waste it. Mm-hmm. One thing we'll need to decide to do is if we want to, like, on the ends of these, but little bits of buff. Oh yeah, at the ends of the post. Yeah. I don't know. What I th do you think? I think I'll probably be okay with that. But it might actually look kind of weird with it. That's sort of what I was thinking. Because of the nature of 3D printing, 
these pieces are all a little flatter than they would be in normal, in real life. But they do make a very nice looking tower. Once I get through applying this brown to the last spots of this tower that are unpainted, my next task will be to take the buff, which is the lighter beige that is making up parts of this tower, and um, go over and just clean up some edges and make sure there's not any errant spots where there was maybe some brown that shouldn't have been. Okay, so I got really roughly the brown on there, and now that it's roughly on, I'm going to switch brushes to a smaller one, and uh, get the edges, specifically this one. So I've got the brush bars. As you can see, the paint goes slopping all over the place, but then I fill it in with the with the buff later, um, and then touch it up with the brown, and then touch it up with the brush, and then it's uh, ready to be washed. You make it sound so quick and easy. Mm hmm But yeah. it actually takes a minute. Yeah, filling in all these little triangles, it's, it's really... Yeah, it's actually pretty time-consuming. Surprisingly so. Yeah, it can certainly take like probably four times longer to fill in all those little triangles on one side as it does to paint these large areas on the inside and all four sides together.
what I really want is to put my pinky on one to stabilize, but it's on one specific spot that I know to be wet. <laughs> so, I am resisting the urge. I'm pushing through it. being really quiet today yeah sorry i'm focused in a bit on uh getting this edge on um yeah the the paint is near the end of the pot so it's a little thicker than i would like it um but i want to get use yeah. out of it yeah, and i know to use that well i know i have to clean up anyway so mm -hmm. It's not too bad, but it's m mostly just mildly annoying. It just doesn't spread quite the way you want it to when it thickens a little too much. And that's just part of the drying process on the paint, but when it gets lower, there's less of the thinner and stuff that's in it and more air. It tends to thicken up a little and if I was doing I would not be attempting this if I was doing like a horse or a character figure but since this is just a wood structure and I have a cleanup to do anyway um a couple spots here and there are just another brush stroke or two to fix but it does mean this bit is a slightly messier bit than I would like it. Um, but, you know, try and conserving paint. Where you can. I think I got brown on all the places that need to be dark brown. I'm just giving it one more kind of look over. Sometimes with the darker colors. As it dries. Yeah, you'll get a thin spot or you'll see a spot that you missed. Also, indentation there. Since you're basic, I'm going to yeah, take that. Definitely use that. That one's just still pretty thick, but it's not the same as the cap. Mm hmm.
Okay, I believe then a touch up spot or two. I can swap to the buff. Let's see a spot on the leg here. That was a little thinner than I wanted it. I'll patch that up. No. <laughs> That side has a lot more touch-up to do than, like, this side, for example. Because I was working with the thicker paint, and that's why you generally want to always control the volume, of, the thickness of your paint when you're working as much as you can. Yeah, I'm going to oh, need more of that. Just a little. I have some touching up to do. No, okay. I'm going to uh, just use some uh, denatured alcohol here to get it in my... Eye dropper and use that to thin what's left of the paint in the bottom of that. I just have an inside edge I need to get. So I'll take a second. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to use this toothpick and stir it up from the bottom. the pigments that are settled there, They're all mixed together. And hopefully uh, that will result in uh, paint that we can use until it's gone. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure all my inside edges here are brown in order to maintain the... Actually what I'm going to do, hopefully it won't dissolve this cup. I'm going to pour a little in this cup and use it to clean that larger brush I was using. Anyway. Mm, it's about time to retire that. Yeah, I might not want to put rust in our paint. Yeah, well, I'll just use it to clean this brush and I'll use the uh, isopropyl. Now I'm done with the brown for now. I'll clean this brush off. Because this little brush is what I'll be using for um, doing a lot of my touch up. Because it's just going to be a little spot here and there of the buff color. Right here. This buff, where there was like maybe a little touch too much. I saw a spot along the edge there. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this. There. All right. Do you want me to close up the brown for now? Um, I'm going to be thinning it. All right. So next thing I need to do is just go around this whole thing and Make sure all the spots that should be buff, the light beige, are light beige. And hopefully not hit any of the spots that should be brown. Because um, then I would have to touch those up again and do a little back and forth. So I'm going to try and be a little more careful this time around. I'm gonna give this a little bit better of a shape. Get the everything mixed properly. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just uh, there's a lot of pigment down at the bottom, so I'm gonna just keep putting some isopropyl alcohol in here, which is a thinner for the paint. And mixing it up from the bottom. See how much of it we can turn into usable paint again. Mix these for the most part by just shaking them. But, uh, you know, when the pigment settles into a clump on the bottom and there's not much liquid in it. So 
the alcohol is not exactly the same as the thinner that they sell for this paint, which we haven't. You could use water too. Technically. The water would slow down the drying time. The alcohol speeds it up a little bit. Because of that. I'd rather have it speed up a little bit. The reason for that is uh, alcohol evaporates much quicker than water. Correct? Mm hmm. I am cleaning up the inside edges here. There's maybe a spot or two where the brown seeps so, down. We'll see how this goes. And, um, necessarily, open a new jar. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom side where I put in the brown along the edge and I want to just make sure that line between the corners is clear and defined. So I will be also using the brush. If he's done with it. We can take the pot there. Um, and I'll be starting to fill in the little triangle. You might have noticed that we use different techniques. I paint the brown and then fill it in with the buff, and Nikki filled it in with the buff, and then painted the brown over it later. Things differently. Uh huh. So I'm just getting these edges nice and defined. I think the main difference ultimately between our approaches is where we like to uh, do most of the cleanup more on the raised parts or the lower parts. Yeah, it kind of comes down to that, doesn't it? Basically. But what it kind of shows is that while painting has some techniques that can help you accomplish certain things easier, ultimately whatever gets you the end result you personally, the end result you want, is the right way to do it. Because everyone operates a little different, and you can always learn a new technique and learn how to understand how it works, why it's good, everything like that. But ultimately it's down to you and what your sort of skill set allows for.
I'm just being a little quiet because I'm being extra careful. Going along here. What we will be able to do once we get through all of this, and we'll probably... Do you want to just wait with yours until they're both ready and glue them all at once? In terms of walking? Yeah, and gluing. Yeah, we'll just do Okay, I'll just catch up. Let you paint a horse. I won't be doing that today. Slowly, these little triangles. Mm-hmm. So that's more of a thing up version. That's a messy version. Oh, I just gotta keep working my way around to this side now. And I'll probably need the pot soon. Mm-hmm. But... I am very excited for the airing of our Halloween special. I think tomorrow is the fun. first episode. That yeah. was an amazing session. I think it was the most fun I've had playing the game in almost forever. It was just really well designed. And of course, um, you know, we, we executed beautifully. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You gotta toot your own horn, right? Well, you know, we have to make it sound like it's worth seeing. That's true. Oops. Well, that is gonna be some extra cleanup. I did not approach correctly with my brush. That's always important to sort of knowing how you're going to approach the model with your brush. Um, I got way too much. Mm -hmm. Get all of these little bits. <laughs> yeah, 
approaching is important. That's why I've got these boxes. Mm -hmm. I have a couple. Oh, Fortunately, my. those are very easy to touch up. Yes, all you have to do is take a tiny, tiny bit of paint on your brush and just poke it, basically. Mm -hmm. And since it's not along an edge, it doesn't take a while with the same. Yeah, not nearly the same amount of finesse. You're gonna make a mess, make it in a spot that's easy to get to. And they made about, you know, five of those spots. That are easy to get to. Yeah, I have a couple. I'll have to just slowly go around each one one more time with the brown and clean up those a little bit. First, I want to get through all of the buff thing out. And you kind of sort of see where you started getting more tired. I'm a little less focused when you're doing cleanup. One thing I find helpful when doing an edge is to actually set the brush in out a little out from the edge and sort of slide up into it. Just gives you a little more control over where the brush goes. reflected uncertainty about where the edge was going to be. Do. Oh, well, we didn't want it. No, just broke again right where it broke before. Oh, the superstructure? Yeah. I'm just going to get some more glue on it. Yeah, I'll have to be extra careful with those. Once they're all glued in, they should be nice and sturdy. <laughs> but right now, they're just little sticks out on their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that one had broken and been glued. Um, and it just broke at the glue joint again. Yeah,
Alright. Getting past all this buff relatively quickly at least. With only a couple of problem spots. No, this was the one I just painted that I was using a thicker paint on, so it has a lot more cleanup spots than the others. So this will probably take me twice as long. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to go back around and clean up more. Just cause... That thick paint... Luckily, it's cleaning up pretty okay. All things considered. That's it for my buff cleanup, and now I just need to get a couple spots, and you can take them mm -hmm. with the red brown. So I'm gonna take a second. That thing is dry a little, just so I don't mess things up. Clean up my brush and change the three D print behind me, and take a drink. I am just patiently painting these uh, triangles. And our uh, 
these should all be nicely set up. These dungeon tiles that we just glued together today. So they'll be getting a big priming later. We'll be breaking out the airbrush upstairs where we can ventilate and priming a huge pile of dungeon tiles. And what I'm printing right now are these, um, these are more of the bases, but they're a smaller one. So you can put um, little hallways and things together. We got more printing. Give my back a second of standing. <clears throat> How's the buffing? Mm, not too bad. Okay. Seems to be going a little better than the first. This side, I think, is the most dry. So that's the side I'll start with. Get my little clean up. Yeah, hopefully that paint will be working a little better now. Uh, it's been thinned slightly. This is gliding on a lot better. I'd say it doesn't take that long to clean one side once you've gotten the bulk of the work done. Just little touch-ups here and there. I think that's the least dry side, so let me rotate around this way. And you don't need very much paint at all to touch up. A little spot here and there.
two sides cleaned. Two more to do. I believe one touch up on the bottom here where it's just a little thin but I think with that this piece is all set for washing but I'm gonna set it off to the side clean up my little brush here and then I'm gonna be taking a big brush and I'm gonna do it kind of the way dad does for one simple reason I grab these legs all the time when painting these and they're dark brown so I'm just gonna paint the dark brown on so that when it's dry I don't have to think about the legs because I found that was very annoying having legs that were drying while trying to paint the top so I am going to adopt dad's method of doing the bars and stuff first. And I'm going to use a large brush and just get get these legs painted in because they look spindly and small, but <laughs> there's just so many little edges to them with how long they are and how round that they actually have a ton of surface area. Yeah, they're surprising. They look like they'd be the easiest thing in the world to paint. And it wouldn't even be very easy to spray paint them because you have to just go around in so many different directions to get the paint into it. You end up wasting a huge amount. Mm-hmm. But since you've got the brown... Yes. The usual spots here, and you just zap those. There you go, thank you. Yep. Now I'm going to put my fingers on it. You know, because That's I'm always gonna... important. I'm going to be using the brown for a while. You could have waited if you wanted. Or you were thinking of it. And then inevitably, I'll just be painting along and see a giant glaring gray spot on the legs that I just missed completely somehow. Yeah. We did that in the last tower. But I really want to just get these legs out of the way so I can just move on and not think about them. The upside is this red-brown. I don't know if it looks the same with color correction on camera. Just like milk chocolate. 
Yeah, very pretty actually. So almost uh, totally inedible. I don't think it's toxic because it's water based. I would really suggest that no one ever does a Van Gogh and eats their paint. No, don't eat your paint. Ever. No matter how much like chocolate it looks like. Oop. Got a splash off my brush. Well, I that decided for me that I'm gonna go full Greg technique on here and paint the brown on everything. And do it in reverse to what I normally do. Because that basically happened anyway. Accidentally dropped enough paint to cover a section. Going along, making sure I get the inside edge here. Um, because that's going to help delineate between the buff and the, the dark brown later. And I was doing a quick once over because I knew I must have missed part of the leg. And lo and behold, there's a section of the leg I missed. It's always good to take a second, step back, and like double check where you've just painted. nice part about this huge brush is while it's not very delicate, it does hold a ton of paint. So I can really just take my time and spread it all over. Make sure to get my hands covered. Oh, it's important. You know, I'm gonna have to just wash my hands once I'm done with the brown hair. What I should do is wear a glove on the hand that's holding the model. And we have gloves, and I just didn't put them on. Mm-hmm. Uh, use one of those models older things. I don't think it would work unfortunately for something this large. No. Then well we have friendly. maybe when you start the horse. Yeah it might work on that. You might want to try that out because it does look like it'll help quite a bit.
Now I'd like to go and do the upper side of this, but there's not really a good way for me to hold it until it dries a little. So I'll be setting that upside down and taking a minute to clean this brush. The downside of a big brush that holds a lot of paint is that it can take a minute to clean. And I often just clean this brush right in like alcohol. Mm-hmm. Let's put some right there. Yeah, do you mind if I use it? Yeah, please. This really pulls a lot of the paint right out of the brush. Because it's way more soluble. Do it. So especially with a big brush like this that tends to get little bits of it stuck up into it. That'll just keep the brush in better condition for longer. Alright, well I don't really want to touch that until I can flip it over and work the other side, which means the legs need to be dry. But I'm gonna take a minute and drink some of my drink. You'll get a little bit more ahead of me. Would you like to me to bring those painting handles down? Mm, no, we'll do it next show. I'm not gonna be uh All right. I'm not gonna be moving on from this for a while. Um yeah, those bases are still printing. So I'm gonna just take a minute and let my back yeah, relaxing while you're painting, or relaxing while you're not painting. Well, there's actually one thing I could do. I have ladders. Ooh. And to do those, I'm going to want this little board full of holes. <laughs> um. I'm gonna take this sort of crappy medium brush here and shake up my red brown again. And then I'm gonna take a alligator clip. Yep, alligator. <laughs> and just uh, clip on one of my ladders here. I'll actually probably have more success if I do it horizontally like this. I might get a little more grip. Yeah. Alright, so these ladders, all they need to be is red brown. And they will let you get from one level to the other on these towers. We actually included on, I guess we didn't glue them on the top ones, but we had little toothpick chunks on the lower ones um, that these ladders can sort of hang off of and hold into place. You might want to stick those toothpicks on before we paint the middle. Button. Yeah, yeah, we probably should, but shouldn't we? So I won't get every bit of this ladder in one go, because I'm not going to paint where the clip is. But this lets me get 90, 95% of it. And it will give me a place to let it dry. Because I'll just stick it into one of these holes like this. And it will hold it up in the air for one of us to touch accidentally and get covered with paint. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Got to set up little booby traps for yourself. Keep yourself on your toes. Yeah, if you don't get covered in paint, you don't know that you've been painting, right? Mm-hmm. Or something, you know, that's not really true, but, you know, something to say about paint. Uh-huh.
and I just need to make sure I get all of the sides, including the outside edge and inside each section. So I'm going to start at the top rung and work my way down the ladder. And for each one, I'm just checking all four sides. Because it's really easy when you're doing repetitive little paint like this to just completely miss one section. Like you lost track of which one you just did. So now I have 95% of a ladder painted and it'll dry on this clip and i'll set that clip into one of these little drilled holes to dry i have three more ladders so i'll need three of these clips i'll do the two small ones first just like the last stick it on i'll get one side and then the other Quick and easy little ladder painting. All right, I got the sides and the front and back done. Now it's time to hit all of the rungs, just like before, making sure I actually hit every side each rung. Because there are four sides and it's easy to miss out. Another way to do this, which I'm going to do here, is be like, okay, I'm going to get all of the rungs on the left side here. 
And then once I've gone through all of those, I'll flip it over and do all of the rungs on the opposite side. Like that. And then I'm going to do all the rungs that are facing upward. Just go along, get every single one of them, and then all the rungs facing towards the bottom. And this can be a quicker way, as long as you remember to do all four sides. That can be a quicker way to make sure you get all of them covered um, than doing each one, one at a time. So, now we have longer ladders. I don't remember if these are, I think these are for the middle section. No, they must be for between the two arms. Because there's a little extra length there. So, same exact process, just a little bit more. Go down one side. Make sure everything gets nicely coated with paint. Side. Now I'll flip it over and tackle the opposite, the opposite side. Going right down close to, but not on, the clip I'm holding. Okay, now I'm going to get one side of the ladder. It got mostly covered, but just make sure all the little spots get filled in. Do the same on the other. Get it nice and coated. And then we're going to go down the rungs one at a time, making sure they're all painted. And now we'll go the opposite way, starting from the bottom and going up. Up the ladder. And now I need to do each of the sides of the ladder on the inside part. So I'm just going to cruise along, hitting each bit. Making sure it's all the way across. And again, down the opposite side, which is pretty most pretty much covered. There's just a couple spots here and there. One of the things with a small piece like this, when you're going quick, is some of the paint will flash over to the other sides. And now you have one long ladder painted. Slide that in there, facing the same general direction to maintain <laughs> some non, so I don't hit them into one another. And now I take my last clip and we'll attach it down at the end. Make sure it's mostly secure. Now we're going to be perfectly secure on a little ladder like this, but. Yeah, you know, so it doesn't snap off and go flying across the room. Or slide around too much. Too much. 
plopping brown paint down all along one side of the ladder. And what's funny is the messier you are with this, and like the more paint you sort of let run, it actually just means you have to put less paint on when you're going around the sides and stuff, because it will seep over slightly, as long as you're not putting on so much that it's dripping off of what you're painting. You can actually kind of get half of the work done in one go. Sort of like that, you can see along the edge here, some of it's come over the side. Which means when I go to do that side, I already have, you know, a third of it painted. As long as you're not splashing paint all over the place. You can't really mess up on a ladder like this where it's all one color. Okay, so we got the front and back painted, now for the sides. And like I said, there's actually quite a bit of splash that went over the edge, so I don't even need to load up my brush and get more paint on. I just have to spread what's there over the rest of it. And it is the same story on the other side, almost. I was a little too careful on that side, apparently. I don't have as much paint to work with. Just want to make sure I get rid of every spot of gray. Alright, now that the sides are done, we'll start at the top of the ladder and work our way down each rung. Like so. Making sure all the gray is covered. Now we'll flip the ladder over, start at what was the bottom, and work our way up towards what was the top. Alright, easy, easy. Now flip it horizontal, and we will go along the sides of each. Make sure the inside ports of the ladder are in. Flip it over. And we're on the last leg here. Just going along each section. Make sure that it's covered, including the top of the ladder here. All right, one last ladder done. Now, I just need to position that on a little board with holes in it, and those can sit and dry. <sighs> and that's how you paint a whole bunch of little ladders. Now, the um, parts that the clips are holding will need to be painted, but that's just a teeny tiny little piece. <laughs> and once they're dry, all we have to do is uh, pull the clips off, throw some paint on them, and the whole ladder will be done. So, clean off that brush. I'm going to see we're almost done with the 3D prints the back there. Yeah. That's good. So, so I'm going to be getting those. done with this part. I think... So, I have to mix up a little, a little epoxy to fix this. Then we can put the uh, little ladder hooks on it. Yeah. Yep. Very tiny amount of epoxy. Yeah. So, these are what we're printing right now. They're the bases, but they're like half the size. So, they only cover two tiles worth. Oh. 
what those get used for are we have pieces like this and it can create a smaller more versatile piece um lexi knows all of the details on what those are but so she'll walk us through them and i'm pulling off the printing rafts that when they're printed they're printed on this little uh base raft thing in order to uh be secure to itself when it's printing and you can just mm -hmm. pop them off as long as you're not using really cheap material and you're left with this which is waste but that's okay pla is fully biodegradable um the, you glued those little things to the bottom. Hmm? The little stubs. Yeah, we just glued them to the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to stick it out. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the top down. Okay. And then we'll we'll mix up the glue and get some stuff done. Actually, gonna leave the ones I just printed in there to cool since they just finished immediately. The PLA can still be very slightly malleable after it comes out while it's still hot, and I don't want it to like bend or break. So, unlike these ones that have been out for quite some time, um, pulling off the raft could damage them if they're still hot because they're just they haven't set fully yet So, this brown is mostly dry. Um, what I'm going to do is once we glue the... What we're talking about with the toothpick is we glued a little toothpick in the middle here. For the um, ladders to hang off of. Just to give it a little spot where we don't have to glue the ladder in. Because maybe the guards in the tower would pull the ladder up and just leaving it on glued gives you a little bit more option to sort of represent that in a game um but once that's glued in there's still sections that aren't dry yet but it's mostly dry um there are a couple spots where there's a little bit of thin paint that just happens when you're painting a large area like that so I am going to do a little touch up on the legs, but my main thing will be to get the brown on the top part. Yeah, and I'm almost done. It's just like You're on with the whole thing. No, no. I'm almost done painting the top platform. Mm.
and then we will repair the leg, hopefully, and stick little toothpicks on the bottoms of these towers. Yep. But your tower will be um, pretty close to done. Yeah, so. just like seven hours of touching up. Not that much, but it'll feel like it. <clears throat> And then we'll be giving all of them a big umber wash. I'll probably just use this big old brush. And wear a glove. And wear a glove. Two gloves, probably. And get really messy and just get through all of it. It'll take uh, 30 minutes to dry, probably more. Um, so we probably won't get it today. We'll probably, at the start of next episode, wash all of them if I can get through this. I might not. No, I'm, I'm pretty much... Well, we only have like 15 minutes left. Yeah, we're closing in on being done. So, we won't get there quite yet, but um, we'll be in good shape. I'll probably wash them at some point in that episode. Or at least one of... Yeah. So, Dad here is cutting the um, toothpick pieces that will serve as our ladder holders. Just a little chunk of wood like that. And we're gonna put a drop of glue on and stick them onto the, uh, the undersides. Of things, and I need to take some of this glue off if I can. I'm gonna see if I can carve some of this away because there's just this big blob. That just did not hold. No, it just didn't. Just be careful. Always be careful of sharp objects. Yeah, if I keep playing with that, it will probably just cause it to break more. And that's what it's doing. So we'll stop playing with that. Mix up a little bit of glue. Leave that upside down. Stick this on the end when the scientist, the epoxy is starting to set up. And uh, there we go. If you need to, you could probably just cut a chunk up also off. Huh? And start fresh. And probably just cut it all the way down. We'll see how this works. Okay. I mean, we can always undo it. And when we're gluing, see how it's slightly wider on this side? And mm -hmm. on this side? Mm hmm. Glue it towards the wider section. It gives a little more area to pop up on top of when you're climbing up the ladder. Mm hmm. That, that works. I'm just going to put this tiny bit, what do you want it, right there? Right there. In the middle of the square. Alright. So, with that there, I'm going to take one of these. Teeny tiny toothpick chunks and try and get my hands through. It's like a tweezers? No. Alright, now we're gonna leave it like that. I got more paint on my fingers, that's okay. Get the leg. And I think when these, since these are going to be gluing and stuff, I think once you have the leg stable, what we'll do is call the episode here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And, you know, we'll see how this looks after it sets yeah. up. So, since we're just gluing, I'm going to 
start wrapping up here. Thank you everyone for watching. Just remember this weekend we have our Halloween special. That's the 30th and the 31st. It's a two-part Halloween weekend special here. I think they start at 7.30 Eastern. Mm -hmm. and we and definitely need to see it. It's excellent. Uh, we had a lot of fun filming it. There's a giveaway. To enter that giveaway, you have to uh, follow us on Twitch and message us in Twitch the uh, word Hawthorn. Um, the name of our special is The Haunt at Hawthorn Manor. Um, it uses Ravenloft rules. It's very fun and exciting. And um, otherwise, you can check out our stream, uh, which occurs Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern, typically. But we won't be doing our normal stream this weekend because of the special. So um, feel free to uh, join in anytime. Um, and we'll continue doing these painting mm -hmm. streams Tuesday and Fridays. Yep. So see you on Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.